Okay, so now let's see what this means when you have a, <clears throat> a solution of this form. So again, these are wave solutions that are general solutions. I didn't prove this to you guys, but it's too difficult to prove. Honestly, I, I don't know even if I could do it, but people have looked at this type of equation and they come up with solutions called wave solutions, which have this general form. By this means that, you know, this F could be kind of pretty much anything. Could be a cosine, could be a sine, could be some really complicated form, this function. But it's always a function of something like T, time, minus um, some constant. In this case, it's square root of LC, because we have LC in our equations times distance. So it's sort of relating this traveling thing in terms of something that changes as time changes, distance also, the location also changes. So let's see what, you know, let's use an example of look to look at it. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite this thing and put LC over down here and look at a sort of a, what a solution might look like. So let's say we have a V of Z T is some function of Z minus T over root L C. And let's say this function is something really complicated, something so complicated, I'm not even going to be able to write it. It'll look like I'll just draw it as a some kind of a symmetric function like that. So that's what f looks like. So my point being that it f the function f can be anything, it's just that the solution, so it really depends on what we launched into this transmission line, but the point being that this will actually travel through the transmission line. So let's look at what the solutions will look like. So at <clears throat> time is equal to zero. And if I draw <clears throat> the transmission line, at time equal to zero, notice if I plug in t equal to zero here, I'm just going to show up, get f of z. And let's say this is z, this is z equal to zero. So I'm going to end up with f of z. So at z equal to z zero, I'm going to have v at z at time equal to zero is going to be f of z. So it's going to be this original waveform. So I'm just going to cut and paste this thing. So the peak is going to be right at z equal to z zero at t time t equal to zero. Now, when time changes <clears throat> at t is equal to delta t, so an incre increment of time later, and let's say that delta t is bigger than zero, then um, v at, so I'm going to draw this thing again. And then this is going to be um, some other point. So basically, at this point, let me still paste this guy. Let's see. No. Okay. I have to grab it again. So what's happened at this delta t, we note that, oops, 
this guy's shifted over so that this v add z add t equal to delta t is the same function but at a time earlier so or so notice i'm subtracting this thing so this is a positive value i'm subtracting it from z so if i look at this point here i'm gonna be now looking at a point here whatever that is z minus z minus delta t over lc so that's going to be somewhere here okay so the waveform has moved this means the waveform has moved to the right and the new new maximum value has moved to z is delta t over square root of lc so delta t over square root of lc has units of distance okay so basically we have if we have any kind of function with this on the inside of the function this kind of general form where we have a relationship between z and t it could be the constant could be on the z side it could be on the t side it could be on both but when you have such a thing what it represents is a waveform that's moving that's moving along so you're representing a change this waveform this function is as a function of time it's going to change its location without changing its form okay so that's the general meaning of this wave equation. Okay, so we looked at the case where the general so solution is some function of z minus t over root lc. And that means that <clears throat> you could have a waveform that's moving with time. So this would be at time at t equal to zero. And this would be at t is equal to delta t. And this is the direction of z. So it's traveling in that direction. But like I mentioned, so this is a possible solution for this, which is z minus t over square root of lc. So this could be a solution, but then you could also have a solution of t plus square root of lc. So now let's see what happens is, because that's also a possible solution. If, if we look at a solution of v of z of t is f of z plus t over root lc. Then we end up with the waveform, instead of going from left to right, it's going to go from right to left. So what's going to happen is at time t equal to zero, it's going to look like that. And at at a time later, at t is equal to delta t, it's going to move over that way. So you're going to have a waveform that's moving to the left if we look at this solution, which is permissible. Or if we look at this type of solution, which is also permissible, you can get waveform moving in that direction <clears throat> and in fact in both cases the velocity of this waveform is going to be delta z over delta t 
since delta z is equal to delta t over square root of lc, then we end up with delta d over square root of lc over delta t is equal to 1 over square root of lc. So this is velocity. So going back to what all of this means is, or recap of what we just did, we said for certain transmission lines, we can represent the transmission line as a two-wire trans as a two-wire system where the separation between the wires doesn't change. And if we ignore resistance um, and we assume that it's uniform in the meaning that, again, the separation doesn't change, the capacitance and inductance per unit length stay the same. That's what uniformity means. And it's lossless, meaning there's no resistance. In that case, if you put in a waveform into the system, if you put a, a varying voltage or current into the system, what it's going to do is travel either from left to right or right to left, depending on some things. So we're going to talk about what those things are. But generally, you can have a situation where you can have you input a waveform somewhere at this input of this thing. And as time <clears throat> increases, it's going to go from left to right without changing its shape. So you're going to basically think of launching a waveform and it's just going to go sailing through from left to right. Or also permissible is that you launch the waveform going this way and it's going to go that way from right to left also that's also a permissible solution and um <clears throat> and so we can basically those are both those are both solutions so um let's see what else and then they those waveforms are going to move with the velocity of L over 1 over LC. That's how fast those waveforms are going to go from one side of the transmission line to another, or that's how fast they're going to be traveling. Okay, so this is like a very important um, fact or whatever is the, is the velocity of this transmission line. It's an important parameter. Because <clears throat> notice we said in the previous lecture, we said that the at least one of the properties of the transmission line is the delay through the transmission line. And this velocity tells you what the delay would be. Yeah. Now, so th that's, you know, very sort of like a general um, solution. Now, to go further, we're going to look at some functions that are easy for us to analyze. It doesn't mean those are the only, you can have any function of with this t minus uh, 1 over lc or t plus lc in it but we can really have any general function 